welcome to our webinar this evening. It is Monday, June the 12th, and we are talk about, talking about communicating your purpose, a simple way to attract partners and money. And I'm so excited to have Nick Kindler here. I met Nick about, about a year ago, I think, Nick. We're coming up to about a year now. And yeah. um, Nick was a guest speaker at a real estate moguls event that I was part of. And I absolutely loved the way that Nick communicated and what he communicated. And it resonated so much with me because a lot of people are out there right now raising capital, looking for partners, and they're doing deals first. And then they're getting into a situation where they're like, I just got to find a partner. I just got to find a partner. And the question becomes, what makes you different from all the other deals? Which is kind of what George was saying is like, how do you evaluate deals? So what I wanted to be able to work on with everyone this evening is how do we clarify what our purpose is and communicate it in a way that attracts partners and money to us even before we find our next deal or our next opportunity. So we're really fortunate to have Nick with us. He is absolutely an expert in this field and um, I appreciate his time so much. Here is my quick disclaimer. This is what the legal people tell me I need to have. So basically, before taking any action, always do your research. And that includes, but isn't limited to talking to other people about their experiences, talking to your legal and accounting teams, and then making your final decision after you have consulted your experts on your team. Quick reminder about how Zoom webinars work. So in your chat box, see, here we go. In your chat box, you should see a drop down at the bottom. Make sure it is checked to everyone because otherwise Nick and I are the only people who see the outstanding revelations you are going to share with us this evening. Make sure your drop down is clicked and it says everyone. And if you would like to ask a question of Nick or there was something you would like us to circle back to, please use the Q&A tab. So you can see the other Q&A tab is here. The reason why is because it holds those questions for us so that we can circle back and answer them. If you put them in the chat box, we love you guys, but we might lose track of your questions in the conversation because I know Nick is super interactive with all of his presentations. He'll have questions and want to understand more. So Click the chat box, make sure it says everyone, use the Q&A for your questions. We have a quick agenda this evening, welcome and introduction. I've got like two minutes left. We're gonna get right to our presentation with Nick. We'll do a Q&A at the end and then we will do a wrap up. And I do have a giveaway for everyone. So make sure you stay till the end of the webinar so that we can qualify you for the giveaway. I am your host, Elizabeth Kelly, and um, my goal, as always, is to help people find success, chart their own journey, and uh, look for a path in real estate that is specifically catered and designed to them and will help them meet their goals in the fastest and easiest way possible. As I mentioned, Nick is a keynote speaker, a communication coach, and an eternal entrepreneur. I love that because usually most of us who are entrepreneurs, we're kind of serial entrepreneurs. You know, we don't very rarely have one business. Usually we have multiple big ideas, big visions, and we're always at some point in the creation process. Uh, Nick specializes in working with leaders, entrepreneurs, scientists, academics academics to become stronger, more effective communicators and speakers. So he's being super modest here, but Nick literally works with huge company leaders and helps them clarify and communicate. So we are really, really lucky to have Nick here with us this evening. Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, thanks for that great introduction. And Hello, everybody. Uh, I've got the chat up on my other screen. So if I look over here, I'm paying attention to you particularly well. Um, Elizabeth, you're going to stick around, right? I can. You're going to jump in as we go along and and encourage questions and whatnot. I, I um, I'm really excited to be here. I'm going to share my screen if that's all right with everybody, and I want to make sure that everybody can see it. So when, let me know if you can see my screen. Can everyone see my screen at this point? Yes. We can see your screen. It looks fabulous. Awesome. Okay. Can I ask everybody to do the following then in, in thank you, Kristen and Sebastian and wonderful. Can you um, just, uh, I, see, I can see you've got your name, but can you just do this for me in the chat? 
write your name, write what you do, like your title, and what drives you, what, what really gets you going, what gets you excited. So take a moment. So for example, I'm going to put, my name is Nick Kindler, and uh, I'm the uh, CEO and communication coach. Uh, and I am, what drives me is great music. There we go. So just to give you an example. So let's see, I just love, I'd love to hear what drives you. What drives you? This is just a little warm up because I wanna hear more from you as we go along. So coach, love helping people solve problems. Awesome, project manager. And if I mispronounce, please uh, tell me if I get it right or wrong. Um, it's uh, Srikanth. I, I hope I did that right. And uh, real estate journey, that's driving me these days. Nice, Kristen. Love helping people feel better. Lovely. Thanks, uh, Srikanth. Anyone else? Uh, Melissa, senior learning consultant in instructional design. Being outside. Yes, I love that too. Who else? Who else? Do we have anything else? I know some people may be listening or watching. Uh, the more you interact, the better it gets. Let's see here. Wow, we've got lots of uh, things. We've got Doug um, bringing change the way to the way we build houses. Uh, Barbara runs their own, you run your own uh, design studio, help solving homeowners design dilemmas. Wonderful. And uh, Andy is a project manager and family drives you. Love it. Uh, sorry, Mitch, I, Mitch, I missed you. Uh, Michelle, senior program advisor, government, reaching out, reaching for my dreams. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you very much. Um, my next question, my next question is I'm really interested to hear because I'm in the communication space. So we're going to dive into purpose and, and how we articulate it in just a moment. But I'm really interested in what challenges you're facing as a leader when it comes to communication. And by the way, it can be something small, like having hard conversations, like crucial conversations. It can be something, or which is, by the way, it may seem big, but it's a smaller thing. Or it could be, I have to stand in front of large groups and talk, or and I get nervous. What is the one thing, your, sorry, your greatest communication challenge as a leader right now? Drop it into the chat, please. Entering my message, ensuring my message lands the way I want it to. Elizabeth, that'd be funny if I misread that in particular. Um, thank you. Ensuring my message lands. I love that. And you're not alone, Elizabeth. Speaking clearly and directly, uh, being more polished as a speaker, staying on point, closing the deal, making the sale. Amen, Tammy. I can agree with that. Um, let me just see, is there, oh, there's a couple more. Ditto, adjusting my expectations to how others communicate. I respond quick, yet I find I need uh, to prompt many times to others. And then Barbara very quickly said, ditto. So um, interesting. So there's a couple, and I'm wondering if there's any one of these that you can, that resonate with you a little bit. Like that, yeah, I'd, I'd like to, to learn more or be better at communicating and closing on the deal. Uh, being a more polished speaker. If those uh, resonate with you, just give me a thumbs up or a yes in the chat. If any of any of them whatsoever, because the more, uh, okay, thanks, Mitch. Thank you, Barbara. Wonderful. Um, so I'm going to just take a moment. I'm going to um, I'm going to be sharing my screen for the most part. But as we go along, I've got both the chat and the questions. If you have a question, please use the question so that I can see it. And Elizabeth, if I've missed it or if somebody's asking something, just wave me down, interrupt, it doesn't matter. I'd rather have this as a conversation. But I wanna start by sharing a couple of things. And this is, you know, I've had the privilege of working as a communication coach for a long time. I, I am gonna share a little bit about my background very briefly in a few minutes. But but uh, I just wanna share with you um, a, a number of years ago, something pretty interesting happened to me that really changed the way I thought about communication. And in particular, purpose and, and communicating purpose. And uh, I was uh, um, I was working with a woman by the name of Laura and Laura didn't know she was a leader. And I just want to be clear, I'm speaking to you all today as a peer. 
you're all leaders and I'm a leader. I'm a leader of an organization, a company. I volunteer on a board. Uh, I, I work in different ways as a leader. And I know all of you, whether you're family uh, members uh, or uh, board members or running your own businesses or working part-time in businesses and running, and uh, you're all leaders in different ways. So Laura was a leader. She didn't know she was a leader. Uh, Laura worked as a regenerative scientist in uh, here in Toronto at Mars, which is one of the world's foremost uh, incubators and accelerators, especially in science and technology. Can I just get a, a yes or a thumbs up if you're familiar with uh, Mars here in Toronto? I'm not sure where everybody's from, but let's just see if we get some, some people who are familiar with it. Okay, so Peter is aware of it. Thank you, uh, Barbara. Thank you. Um, so... Uh, uh, what happened was I was help, I was doing this uh, coaching program workshops followed by one on one coaching followed by a showcase and uh, regenerative scientists are kind of um, interesting in the fact in the fact that they have to kind of pitch their research that they've done in order to get the next round of funding so think of it as kind of like finding your next client or selling that house or buying that house you you're you're always pitching the next round. I know it sounds odd. They're working for years and then they have to pitch to what you call the principal investigator. D does, does my research merit more funding? Well, and sometimes they win, sometimes they lose. Well, Laura was preparing to present and unfortunately we were running out of time. I was worried because I didn't understand what Laura was really talking about. And while I'm not a regenerative scientist or a scientific background, I'm, I'm really good at digging in and understanding complex ideas and getting people to clarify and simplify them. So I decided to um, take a, a different approach with Laura. And I, I said to Laura, um, tell me what happens from the moment you get into your office at Mars to the moment you leave every day. And she said, okay because I was trying to understand what she did. And I was in particular trying to get her to articulate her purpose, the purpose of her research. She said, look, I, I get in every day and I, I once I get into the lab, she works in a lab, um, I check uh, the readings on the regenerated pancreas. And then I go and do a little bit of other readings. And I said, hold on a second, Laura. Um, did you say regenerated pancreas? And she said, uh, yeah. And she kind of looked at me, we were in person, not virtual. We were in person. Um, she looked at me like I was an idiot. And I, I'm not an idiot, but I didn't know anything about that. And so right now, I want you to be honest with me. Did you know you could regenerate a pancreas? Write down yes or no in the chat. Be honest, be honest. All right, thank you. Nope, nope, nope. I did not. Okay, so neither did I. So I said, okay, so you, you regenerate the pancreas. So what are you doing with it then? And she said, well... What we're really doing is we're trying to vascularize the pancreas so it works within the system of the body. That's the problem we're solving. And right then, we had a purpose. We are vascularizing regenerated pancreas so that we can um, ensure that it works within the system of the body. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Why am I sharing this with you? Because this might have been Laura's greatest communication challenge. Here's why. If we regenerate a pancreas... We get rid of diabetes. 1.6 million deaths happen every year from diabetes. One, one of the people in the world, the, the 451 million people in the world with diabetes is my mother. At 82 years old, she's been living with diabetes for more than almost 60 years. I think more than 60 years. So, so this is a huge problem. And this isn't, by the way, taking into account uh, pancreatic cancer, right? Uh, and other things that will be cured if we solve this regenerated pancreas and, 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 and making it work within the system of the body, vascularizing it. Now, what's fascinating is we have this problem in all kinds of business. And I, I call it leadership versus the complexity knot. And we're gonna dive into how do we untangle that today. And in particular, how pur purpose can help you uh, make uh, help make things um, super super clear and super easy. Um, uh, I just want to check in. Every all good with the chat, Elizabeth. You can just give me a thumbs up virtual uh, on camera. All good. Okay. I just want to make sure oh, and no one was falling behind. I do think that a lot of us are like Laura that 
we're leaders that with our own subject matter that are and our own subject matter expertise that we're driving towards our own goals, whether it's trying to find uh, partnerships or funding, uh, whether it's uh, articulating the value of an opportunity, uh, but we're communicating information that is not clean and clear. It's not simple. So communicating complex information clearly and concisely is a struggle for many people. Effective communication uh, of complex information requires the ability to simplify and synthesize complex ideas. And if an audience lacks prior knowledge or experience in spe specific domain, whether it's regenerative science or real estate, it may require additional effort to break down complex concepts and make them accessible. So today I wanna to talk about that. I wanna talk about how we do that. Um, and we're gonna spend the next 40 minutes or so breaking it down. And I do encourage you to not get left behind if you have a question, just drop it in that Q&A and I will happily pause and, and jump in. Just so we are clear, uh, why is it? Why is this my area of expertise? Like, why do I talk about this? And why am I not Tony Robbins? Because I know somebody wanted Tony Robbins tonight. Well, somebody once said to me, I'm not, I'm not saying this is true. Somebody once said to me when they saw me speak, you're like the Tony Robbins of communication. And uh, I love that. I've never published, publicized it because I feel a little Canadian in, my, in nature. You know, I'm going to downplay it a little bit, but um, I'm not Tony Robbins, but I am here to help. And I think that I, my tools and techniques can really help and have helped a lot of people. Uh, my company helps leaders and teams get aligned, get clear and get moving when things matter most. And uh, just a little bit of a background, I'm a TEDx speaker. I'm a coach. I work with C-suite leaders and emerging leaders. Um, I've worked with leaders from around the globe, from Australia to Abu Dhabi and Dubai to here in Toronto and across Canada. Um, I just got back from Victoria, not far from Tofino, where one of you is gonna be this summer. Um, and I was delivering a program uh, to hundreds of entrepreneurs, uh, number one, delivering uh, a keynote, but also having coached five leaders that always wanted to present in front of a large audience. And they did so beautifully. They delivered a uh, TED style or impact talk, as I call them. But I'm also a board member uh, on the I'm the current president of the Entrepreneurs Organization in Toronto. Um, I've been uh, on the regional uh, board as well. I'm faculty at Singularity University and the Growth Institute, for those of you that are familiar with Scaling Up. Um, and as Elizabeth mentioned, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur my entire life and consultant, having worked with uh, just a handful of the uh, these organizations, or uh, these are just a handful of organizations below. The other thing I did is when uh, COVID hit, does that ever, everyone remember they called it the great pause right at the beginning. And then it became a lot longer than a great pause. It was a horrendous pause. But what, when the great pause happened, um, uh, I wrote a book called Impact. And um, and if you're interested in uh, in hearing more about the book and getting a copy of it, stick around. Uh, I'll, I'll have an opportunity for you to meet with me at the end of the session. Um, you can book a time and we can uh, ensure that you get uh, an e-copy as well. So uh, the book is about my time working as TED and Singularity coach and the process that I'm going to share with you or part of it tonight. Uh, we don't have enough time to go into all of it. It's a multi-day program that I offer or month, many month program, depending on the variation. But I wanted to start by uh, sharing um, uh, some insights and I'm also going to talk a little bit about um, uh, how we can get into the clarity of purpose that will really serve you as leaders and serve your organizations. Does that sound good for everybody, to everybody? Uh, just get a thumbs up or a yes or a heck yeah, whatever you want to say. That's amazing. That's amazing. And, Barbara and Barbara is so honored that you're with us tonight. Oh, wow. Thanks, Barbara. That's really nice of you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so, so let's let's talk about uh, this little survey that I did during the beginning of COVID when I was, you know, scared just like everybody else, hiding in my basement um, and surrounded by my grown children, or, well, teenage children at the time, I guess, um, and wondering when I'll be able to get outside again and see the people that I love. Um, I sent, and my clients, I was like, when do I get to see my clients again? So I sent my top clients, about 25 of them, 
uh, and they're all C-suite leaders, uh, a question. And the question is the exact same one I asked you, what's your greatest challenge uh, with communication as a leader? But I've made it a little more timely, I said, right now. And what I found was that um, all of them sent out, sent me back some really interesting information, some really um, valuable insights, but they all went into three buckets. And um, here's what I want you to do is I, I love usually when I do my webinars, I don't use webinars so I can see everybody's faces. I ask people to turn the camera on. So all I'm going to ask you to do is give me a heck yeah or a hell yeah, whatever you feel comfortable with, um, if you can relate to these problems. So the first one that the first bundle or bucket of problems was that they just felt they didn't have enough time. That there wasn't enough time in the day to get everything done. That uh, whereas before they could spend time going to the coffee machine. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. That uh, they just didn't have enough time to stop, think, and, and get clear about stuff. Does everyone understand? Yeah, I got a bunch of heck yeahs or a few so far. Um, right. I mean, honestly, I can I guarantee you if I do a poll, if everyone feels they've got enough time in the day to get all the things done, they don't. We don't. And it's a problem. And we, that's a whole other webinar we can talk about another time. This leads to another key problem that was shared with those leaders, which is clarity. But they don't have enough time to stop and think and get clear on their strategy, on their messaging, on their purpose. Um, and this led to an even greater and kind of more prolific problem, which was that they felt that they, they weren't great leaders. And by the way, th these individuals I'm, I'm referring to, they were terrific leaders, but they felt that these two, two areas, lack of time and lack of clarity, were undermining their leadership abilities. So, you know, we all have these problems. You know, we all have these problems. We don't have enough time. We don't have, we don't have the ability to get clear sometimes. Sometimes it's not about because they don't have, we don't have time, but sometimes it's because we don't have the process to get clear. And tonight I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, some tools that you can use anytime to get clear on process and clear on message. So that when you are communicating with your clients, when you're talking to potential clients, uh, you have the ability to get clear before you go out and start speaking. You can just think about it very briefly, and I'll give you this tool to answer a few questions and help you get there. Now, one of the things I, I, I did in my book is I, I outlined the core principles of communicating with impact. And tonight, we're just going to really touch on one, but I thought I'd share them with you so that you can see how this can fit. Um, the, first, uh, the first is simplify. And, and I kind of alluded to this. And this is the bucket, by the way, that we, for the most part, are going to focus on tonight in the time that we've got. The second principle is whoops, I, I pressed the uh, advanced button, that is transform. And this is just a fancy $20 word for uh, storytelling and language. Um, and the third principle um, that we should embrace if we want to communicate with impact is a mindset of performance, like that every single time we're communicating, we're presenting and performing. And you'll notice that I know exactly where you are. I know that where my camera is and where my visuals are, and I'm prepped. I'm ready to go. That's a virtual state uh, setting. But if you were to meet me in person, uh, I'd pretty much be ready to go uh, as well. Because when it's time to, to present, or time to communicate, it's uh, time to, I love it. I thought it was ADHD. I can relate to that too, Elizabeth. There you go. Um, okay. So what happens when we simplify, which is really interesting, is we provide access to information that was previously inaccessible. And when we tell stories and transform, we create a deeper level of understanding with our audience. And when we perform, when we perform, come on, perform, there we go. When we perform, we create a connection. And in the center, in the epicenter of this incredibly beautiful Venn diagram, is impact. It's it's the results or outcomes that you're looking for. And just to give you a fun little example, and this may be kind of small on your screen, but let me know if you can see it. Um, let me know if you can see it. Is this working? There we go. Um, here is just a, a great little cartoon that I saw. This is how the customer explained it. This is how the project, oh, this is a great breakdown of communication. I forgot to set this up. Um, how the customer explained it, how the project leader understood it, how the engineer designed it, how the programmer wrote it, 
how this is my favorite one. How the sales executive described it. How the project was documented. By the way, when I did this to engineers last week, uh, they lost it on that project documentation. Um, and, and of course, how the engineer designed it. My wife's an engineer. She loves that one. Um, how the customer was billed. That's always fun. How the help desk supported it. But what the customer really needed was this. They just needed this. And this is constant, but, uh, you know, communication is a, is, a, is a really fickle thing and bad things can happen if we don't communicate. Bad deals can happen. Uh, Rogers, there's a famous comma quirk in a contract. It was missing a comma. Rogers, the, the big telco, lost $2 million in the legal battle because of a comma quirk, right? Just missing a little bit of communication. But also, and now this gets a little heavy, uh, the space shuttle uh, disaster, Columbia, you know, they, they literally could have um, could have avoided that disaster if there had been better communication. So there's lots of examples of that in, in the world. Now, Steve Jobs said, and I do love this, simple can be harder than complex. You have to work hard to get your thinking clean and make it simple. I just want to focus on that. Work hard to get your thinking clean. That's what we're going to do in just a moment. But it's worth it in the end, because once you get there, you'll move mountains. So I'm going to um, share with you uh, something that you can use, uh, some tools that you can use, by the way, in pitches, town halls. And again, I know that we've got lots of different uh, leaders here. In conversation, in emails, I'm going to show you all these tools that you can use. Um, and today, as a giveaway, you'll receive a handy dandy multi use tool. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Don't get too excited. It is the leader's pocket knife. Okay, this is the leader's pocket knife. We're going to talk about, if we have time, we're going to talk about all four of these. But really, in particular, we're going to look at this top left one and the bottom one. Uh, and uh, I, have, I have one question for all of you. Are you ready? Let's see. See who's engaged here. Are you ready? Who's quick? Who's quick on the go on the Yes I Am chat? Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Doug. Awesome. You're all wonderful, and I appreciate your engagement. Thank you. So, I, I want before we talk about articulating and crafting the purpose, I want to I want to share an important idea, which is that we need to raise the stakes. Um, all great communication, all great communication, all great presentations, identify a burning gap which is really um, uh, this opportunity that present that is available to, to you. I think of this as an opportunity available to you in your communication. So the burning gap is really this. It is the bad current status quo, the better future. I'm just going to say it again. The bad current status quo and the better future. And this is what it looks like when it comes to bad status quo and leadership. The bad status quo. Leaders who are unclear, uninspiring, unmemorable, and hard to follow. And we create a better future with leaders who are asp um, clear, inspiring, memorable, and easy to follow. This is an example of a burning gap that I would articulate, for example, to help people understand the value of the work that we bring to the table here at Kindler & Company. So my question to you is, and I want to ask you to do this in a kind of a sprint format. Like I'm literally going to give you one minute. What is your status quo? What's the problem? What's the problem? And accentuate the, how bad the current reality is. It needs to feel obvious. And then what's the aspirational better future? It needs to be inspiring, grounded, relevant. It needs to be, and it needs to result directly from what you're communicating about. Does anyone have one that they're, um, uh, anyone, anyone have one that they're willing to try, even just to put the status quo up of let's, and you can use real estate as an example, as an industry or a problem with customers, a property challenge that you may have. Anyone have a problem, a bad status quo that you might want to share? And, and if it's not right, we'll make it right. We're going to make it right. So anyone have one they, they feel comfortable sharing? Okay. 
can you can you give us an example, Nick? I mean, I'm happy to I'm happy sure. to jump in and add something if nobody else is comfortable sharing. Yeah. I just want to make sure I yeah. fully understand what you're looking for. Well, it, it's it's literally you know, for example, a bad status quo of uh, of of for leaders is leaders are unclear or they're uninspiring or they're unmemorable. So one might be a leader is unclear, and it's literally the opposite. A leaders who are clear. That's all we're talking about. It's that simple. So um, um, status quo, uh, not enough available properties. Fe better future, lots of available properties. It could be that simple, right? Absolutely. So what I see right now is that there's not a lot of deals that make sense right now because the cost of money is so high. Right. So um, I'm seeing a comment here. Don't think we can speak, can we? And the answer is no. So just type in your bad status quo. Everyone type in a bad status quo. Sorry, Elizabeth. I just wanted to encourage people to drop it in. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so what was yours? Uh, just that it's very challenging right now to find deals where the numbers make sense because the cost of the money to finance the deals is so high. If this was two okay. years ago, the same deals okay. that didn't make sense would work. So financing too high. Yeah. Right. Okay. Resulting in challenge, uh, challenge in purchase or challenge in buying or challenge in opportunity. And so, um, Barbara, thank you for putting this down. Uh, I want to raise money to buy houses for lack, for the lack of student housing. So um, lack of, in this case, because you want to raise money, there's a lack of funds to buy student housing. Just as an example. The world needs to build 69,000 homes every single day till 2030 to meet demand. So bad status quo, lack of demand or lack of um, uh, lack of uh, homes to uh, required um, or lack of inventory. Thank you, Barbara. You helped me find my word. Thank you. Uh, lack of inventory. The future state is abundance of inventory or however you'd want to articulate it. So that just think of it very simply as... The status quo is, is not ideal to an ideal. Like this is what I want us to get to. So for example, um, uh, Doug, lack of affordable housing to abundance of, you know, I want to change, move us from a lack of affordable housing to an abundance of affordable housing to meet the demands of 2030. Could be that simple. Could be that simple. Um, when borrowers don't communicate their challenges and leave you wondering if they'll be able to pay you back. When borrowers don't communicate their challenges and leave you wondering. Okay, so lack of communication from borrowers, leave, uh, which creates real concern to wonderful, clear communication from borrowers to foster better partnerships. These are these are an example, or that's just some example of the burning gap. And and it, what it does is it's this is just a segue into purpose. Because what I want you to think of is here's where I'm at, or here's where the, the, the industry is, and uh here's where we can get to. I want you to be aspirational um in the things that you want to be purposeful about. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Thumbs up, is that clarity? Yep. Okay. Um, so we've got the burning gap. This burning gap helps you create vision. It helps you identify, identify and clarify customer needs. It's great in change management. So this is a, kind of the first thing I want you to think of uh, as you start to work through this tool toolkit or tool, uh, tool pocket knife. Now, the reality is when we simplify, we can't just simplify in our brains. It just doesn't work that way. We need to use structure. And when we get up every morning, we use structure to simplify our day. We don't get up and get dressed using this pile of clothes unless you're, maybe it's your teenager or, or maybe you do, but ideally you don't do that because you'll be wrinkled. Um, what you do is you go to your closet and you use a structure to simplify your approach. So I want to give you a structure 
that helps you get clear on your purpose and articulate messaging. It actually helps you articulate your purpose, but it also helps you articulate messaging. And I wanna be clear here, there's a, there's a similarity in what I'm sharing here with Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek speaks about purpose. I just wanna be really clear. He's all about purpose and he is awesome. And you know, if you get him, Kelly, Elizabeth, I will be here in like the front row center. Um, but what I'm talking about is drafting communication and, and communicating purpose, communicating purpose. Um, it's a little bit different and it's about purpose of your presentation, purpose of your message, uh, not your life's purpose. Make sense? So I wanna talk a little bit about the three questions that you would ask, which is what, how, and why. What, how, and why. Uh, what is it? How is it different? And why does it matter? And you do want to um, deliver or develop this, sorry, in that order. What is it? How is it different? And why does it matter? Um, what is it? I'm going to give you an example of tonight's workshop, or actually, I don't even know if it's tonight's workshop, but it, um, yeah, yeah, kind of, it's a little different, but it's, it's kind of close. Uh, what is it? A communication, a leadership communication workshop. Uh, how's it different with hands-on coaching to simplify your message? Why does it matter? So you can have greater impact as a leader. Now, the reason I say you develop it this way, and I'm going to show you that in a moment, is it actually doesn't matter if you deliver it this way, but I want you to develop it this way. Um, so, for example, my company's purpose is improved communication. What is it is improved communication. How is it different? We inspire, educate, and empower leaders. And why does it matter? Because we want to make a better world. It actually looks like this on my slides. Uh, we inspire, educate, and empower leaders to create a better world through improved communication. So um, I'm going to ask you, here's a little quiz, folks. Here's a little quiz. And anybody that answers it correctly gets a free e-copy of my book. Are you ready? Are you ready? Answer whose purpose statement is this. Bingo! First one in is, I don't know, it's moving so quickly now. Everyone's jumping it in. It's not mine, Barbara. It's uh, Kristen. You got it. Starbucks. Well done. To inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, and one neighborhood at a time. All right. We're, shall we do another? Shall we do another one? Does anyone want to do, do another one? I've got a few of these. I thought it'd be fun. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This one's hard. Or... A little challenging. Build the best product. Cause no unnecessary harm. Use business to inspire and implement solutions to the environmental crisis. No. Yes. S. Smith. It is Patagonia. Um, and Kristen, can you keep track of who I owe these books to? Is that possible? Do you, um, I know that uh, we have I'll keep Kristen. I'll track for you. All right. Thank you very much. I can, I'll and just I send you... Sorry, I think S. Smith, S. Smith, did I see Mark earlier as your name? S. Smith, you can just confirm there, please. Thank you. I'll keep track. That's two. Okay, thank you. All right, one more, one more. Here we go. Here we go. You ready? To organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Google, that's right. We have Naipaul, I think, with the first one. All right, last one. Last one. This one is the last one we're going to do. Here we go. To accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Bingo, Aaron. We got Tesla. Uh, I wish I could say, and you've won a Tesla, but Unfortunately, you just don't have the budget for that tonight. Okay, um, so we've got four people who are going to get uh, copies of the book. Um, and I just want to share, I, I went, I'm going to dive into the what, how, why, and I want you to think about this. This is going to be the big chunk of today that I want you to take away. But I did the what, how, why for chat GPT. And I asked it its purpose. And it gave me a very long answer. So then I said, can you tell me 
that like I'm a fifth grader. And here we go. Here's ChatGPT, a computer that talks like a person that can learn a lot of information so it can help us communicate and be more efficient. Pretty cool. That's exactly what ChatGPT is. All right, I'm gonna spend a moment here and I wanna break down how to do make really good what's and really good why, how's and really good why's and what and, and kind of break it down. So the first thing is what makes a good what? Uh, a what is a topic it's a, or a subject um, and it's relevant to your audience. So um, you notice that mine was improved communication, right? So we want, that's relevant to a lot of audiences not every audience. Uh, there are professional speakers that I never come up on their radar until they get booed or a, you know, a really bad score. Then they go, maybe I need to find uh, some help on this. But, um, but many people are interested in improved communication. Okay, hows are active and it advances your what forward. It moves it forward. It, you wanna focus here on what is unique. And here's a big secret around this one. It's verb oriented, it's actions. Um, and and that it moves your what forward. And then finally, there's your why. Your why shows the future state. And you know, I, I get to work with people in innovation a lot and uh, Singularity University and a lot of folks in the innovation space within large organizations. And, and um, I love this question, the future state. What is the future state? What's the future, the promise of the what and the how. It's a direct result. Does everyone remember what my, or can anyone remember what my why was? I sure can. One moment, Tammy, I'm gonna come back to that. I'll share the how. Can anyone, anyone remember what my why was? I'm gonna, this is a little bit of a, a, a not a trick question, just see if you can remember. I'll come back to it. Just giving somebody a chance to write it down. Kind of tough because I put it all in one stint. A better world through improved communication. A better world. I we I believe, I truly believe, I, and I do. There's a reason why I have that purpose statement that we can create a better world through improved communication. So my good why is that if we communicate more effectively, if we become, all become better communicators, our world becomes better. So um, I'm going back to the how because Tammy has asked. The how is a verb oriented and, and it, it's action oriented and it moves your what or your topic forward. So I'm gonna share you share some do's and don'ts and then I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. Um, and, uh, and then we'll see how much more time we have to, to get through all of the other tools. So duels, uh, do's and don'ts the, on the what. Really important, be brief, be concrete, uh, and make sure whatever you're sharing is, is anchored in what people already understand and already know. So for example, if I had talked tonight about regenerative pancreas, uh, uh, you know, just assume that regeneration was happening, that's not anchored in the familiar. You might have, I might have lost you. Um, and don't over explain, be abstract, or be really clever. In fact, what I would say here is we're not looking to put metaphors and, you know, this is a, like a sh an ultra sharp knife. It, we don't use the like and the as here. Not yet. That's for later when you're trying to explain the details of something. In the purpose, we need to get away from metaphor, especially in the what. All right. The how. Do's and don'ts. Do. Distill it down to one to three or ideas maximum. Uh, you really have an opportunity here. And when I say opportunity, this is it. The opportunity to focus on what's different about you, your office, office, uh, your offer, everything about, about you, and use playing language again. Don't use jargon. Don't share too much detail. Don't try to jam all the content that you want to share in. There'll be time for that later if it's important enough. And uh, finally, Finally, do's and don'ts. Be aspirational, be grounded, make sure you connect your why to the what and the how. Remember, your what is your topic, your how is the action and moving that what forward. So make sure that your why connects to that. And then speak to what motivates your audience. 
And then don't be generic, metaphorical, as I said already, and, and disconnect from your what and how. Make, and most importantly, don't make it about you. This is about something bigger than you. Okay. Let me give you an example. Uh, I worked with a leader. He was actually an ophthalmologist, but he was a closet uh, economist who had developed in partnership with the University of Toronto AI division, AI AI department, um, a new digital currency. And this man was brilliant. I mean, when I asked him his what and his how and his why, 40 minutes later, I'd heard about the Gold Standards Act. I'd heard about how the Kennedys were influential in creating what the economy is, how the economy is broken and how it will never be fixed unless we do X, Y, and Z. I mean, I literally had a million questions. But my first question was, let me ask you again what your what is, because it was too long. So I, I we broke it down. And this is before, uh, sorry, after we edited it a lot, but still needing editing. So the what? was a new digital currency. The how, I'm gonna highlight in yellow, can be used by anyone, anywhere, anytime, that will always hold value, serving the needs of every global citizen. You'll notice that it is action-oriented, moving that digital currency, that what, forward. And that future state, the why, has the potential to create a world of prosperity and health. And then we edited it down one more time. One more time, there is a digital currency that is highly accessible and has the potential to create a world of prosperity and wealth. That is a purpose statement. Now, as I said, he's crafted it. And if you're talking about it, you can present it this way. But we can, like if he was, if it was his company, creating a world of prosperity and wealth through digital currency and it, that is highly accessible, or making digital currency highly accessible to create prosperity and wealth. I mean, that's it. That could be a tagline or, or, or a purpose statement for his business, not a tagline, but a purpose statement. So the what, how, why has incredible power. You can create a mission, you can position your company or your organization, and you can create a purpose statement for your, for your you know, a uh, talk, for a uh, something a conversation for a, 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 your organization it's it's really quite powerful i'm going to ask you i just realized i don't have uh, the q a up are there any questions at this point this is the opportunity to ask me questions about the what the how and the why i think everybody's been so busy taking notes nick <laughs> They haven't had a chance to type anything in the question in the, the Q&A tab yet. No problem. No problem. I'm going to give you a chance to do that. But I, I guess what I want to say here is this is a lot. I I, I spend a lot. I, I, I kind of shared a lot in a very short period of time. And, and um, I'm going to share a little bit more. But I just want to. This is my check in. Is everyone ready for me to continue on? That's right, Barbara. This is fundamental uh, co corporate communications. Thank you. I'm glad it's useful to you. Okay. All right. Um, all right, folks. Uh, let me, let me share with you, um, the next tool in the toolbox. And these ones are going to be a little faster. They're a little less complex, if you will. But remember, we got to crystallize what's essential. Right? And it's hard as experts. It's hard to do. And, and recognize if you don't think of yourself as an expert, it's time to redefine yourself. Because if you're asking questions like many of you did earlier, like about these problems, my uh, I want to raise money to buy houses or borrowers don't communicate their challenges. Hate to break it to you. You're all experts. Or maybe it's good news. I don't know. Anyways, you need to, to take the time to crystallize what's essential. Now, speaking of that, uh, essential, um, th I want to just talk about something. Once you've got a, 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 um, a purpose statement, sometimes you have a team or sometimes you have customers that aren't hearing you or, or and, and you don't want to yell at them and you don't want to get frustrated. So you want to communicate with them and you want to reiterate something. You don't want to get angry with them. You don't want to get frustrated. You want to reiterate something. 
So it's time for hammer points. You notice that I just did something, I reiterated, I repeated myself, not because I think you weren't getting it, because there's an opportunity. The reality is that leaders are 10 times more likely to be seen as under communicating than over communicating. And this is from the Academy of Management journal from last summer. So uh, I want you to think about hammer points being those things that drive your message home that you think are very important. The world needs to buy, uh, buy 60, uh, build 69,000 homes every day to meet up with the 2030 uh, demand in 2030. Um, we are under underbuilding for demand is another way to put it. We um, uh, we need uh, borrowers need to clearly communicate their challenges up front. I mean these are these are things if you say I need to I need you as borrowers to clearly communicate your challenges with me that you might have up front. I need you as a borrower to clearly communicate your challenges with me before we start. It's very clear. And it also reinforces if you're hammering it, there's a little bit more gravitas to it. Without it being like, if you don't tell me you're going to get my lawyer on you, which it's quite possible you could, and we, I've heard those stories. So my point is you want to draft uh, hammer points sometimes around key messages that are vital to you and your business. Okay, the next piece I want to share with you in the leader's pocket knife is transforming stories. So again, I want to, I just want to go back. I, I want to make sure everyone is clear. This is the most important thing you can do. The what, how, why. Creating that purpose, answering those questions, getting clear on the what, how, why. The rest comes after. Because once you have the purpose, everything follows. It's so much easier to get clear. All right. So go to stories. Now, in sales, in uh, presentations, um, in management, whatever you're doing as a leader, um, stories will help you both translate and transform your audience as you as they listen to you. Um, uh, 60 to 70 percent of stories are of information is retained when it is shared as a story and that's because there's a lot happening in the human brain and I'm going through this ultra quick but I'm going to let you know that if you don't tell stories only two areas of the brain are being activated and if you do seven areas of the brain are activated including the sensory cortex which is the area of the brain that perceives texture through touch so in my book, I talk about this amazing story spine that was created by um, a gentleman. Uh, I think his name was Ken Adams, and he was a playwright in the 90s. He wanted to do like short form improv plays. And then this little tiny company heard about it and used it to produce every single great story that movie that they produced. This, this, story, this uh, company is called Pixar. Uh, Pixar produced their first movie, Toy Story, and every single movie since using the story spine. And I'm going to share this with you really quickly, how, how it goes. Um, once upon a time, there was a character, and every day they had a routine, until one day that routine was broken. Because of that, there are consequences. Because of that, there are consequences. Because of that, there were consequences. Until finally, success or failure. And ever since then, there's a new routine. That's it. That is a story. Once upon a time, just to give you an example, I'm going to do it again. Once upon a time, there was a toy named Woody. And every day he played uh, with his owner, Andy, until one day that routine was broken because Andy brought home a new toy. Type it in. What's the new toy that Andy brought home? You get a book. Why not? Remember the name, please, Elizabeth. Who's getting it? Ooh, hoo, hoo. Maybe there's no Toy Story fans here. And no Googling. This no, they, they're, they're here. Oh, Aaron sorry, I missed one. it. I scrolled down. Who was the first Buzz Lightyear? I thought no movement. I was way up. I'm so sorry, everybody. Uh, Aaron, I think you got a Buzz Lightyear. Well done. Okay, Buzz. And Aaron, every, 
Aaron has okay. a book, so we're going to jump to Tammy next. All right. Well done, Tammy. All right. Until one day that routine was broken, um, they brought Buzz Lightyear home. Um, because of that, uh, Woody, uh, Woody got jealous. And because of that, Woody ran away. And because of that, all of the toys went to find Woody. Right? You can see we're ramping up the consequences here. The conflict gets greater, bit higher, bigger, until finally they convinced Woody that they could all play with Andy. And ever since then, ever since then, they all played with Andy together. They all played with Andy together until, until Toy Story 2, which broke my heart. So um, that's the story of Toy Story. Now, how does this work as a, as a leader? Um, you know, not long ago, or I'm going to, I'm going to be in the future now. Uh, just a week ago, um, uh, I was working with Elizabeth Kelly and she runs a really successful webinar series uh, in the evenings and at lunch hours. And uh, she uh, was uh, frustrated because um, she wanted some new content. Uh, and because of that, she um, was really grumpy all the time. And because of that, um, she was yelling at her husband. I'm making all this up until uh, finally she asked Nick to join her webinar. And ever since then, she's been happy and not yelling at her husband. This is a really bad example, but you can see you can actually use it to tell real case studies. And if you don't believe me, if you think that because that was really silly and I'm sorry, Elizabeth, I know none of that's true. None of that. Going back to your disclosure at the beginning, none of that is true. Um, but, <laughs> that's OK. But it was I, funny. I liked it. OK, good. Um, what I wanted to share is uh, AstraZeneca has recently launched a brand new product. We, I worked with their management and marketing management team. We use this to craft the stories that their teams can tell about this product and about the people that use the product based on re real experience. So this is a great tool that you can use because it breaks down the status quo. Remember the status quo and the burden gap, the characters, your conflict, your stakes, which raised raised conflict, and the better future. So you can actually see it broken down here. It tells you your audience. It gives you an opportunity to share your audience or your target, the status quo, and of course that better future is, is there too. Okay, here's the thing. When you don't have time, when you don't have time to tell a long story, tell a micro story. You know, I was once on a webinar with Elizabeth Kelly and she brought in this guy who told some really interesting stuff about communication. I think his name was Nick. Anyways, you should look him up. Little micro story. Great point, Elizabeth. Sorry, I saw, I didn't know it was you, but that was great. Yeah, it's a great way to manage objections. If you want to jump in and just share what you mean by that, it's a good, it's a really interesting point. So a lot of times when people raise objections, it's something that they're afraid of. So if you're able to share a time when somebody else had the same fear and their fear was able to be mitigated, managed, reduced, um, you know, risk was was able to be decreased, yeah. all these different ways are great ways to be able to, but share it in a story way. And then it's not you going, hey, dumbass, um, you shouldn't be thinking that. It's, yeah. hey, yeah. you know what, your your concern has has validity and here's how somebody else managed the same concern. Beautiful. Yeah, well put. Uh, I like the, your use of the term dumbass too. That was good. Um, awesome. Uh, one more piece about stories. One more piece about stories is it's really in your best interest as a leader to make a list of go-to stories. Um, it, it allows you to, to kind of bring your burning gap to life. Um, uh, it allows you to bring a hammer point to life. Um, and it helps make everything much more memorable and evocative. More importantly, you should have fun with those stories. Take your time with them, especially if you have the freedom of time uh, in, in, a, in a kind of an in-person setting. Okay, so I've shared a few things. I want to put these pieces together for you right now, which is um, all of these pieces work in solo, but in concert with one another as well. So your what, how, why really helps you create a purpose. Your burning gap helps you really drive why that purpose is important. And your hammer points brings bring you your messaging to help reinforce that purpose. And those stories help reinforce those hammer points. So what it gives you 
is a little capsule of messaging that allows you to drive home your message time and again. And again, I want to reinforce, you can use them in proposals and emails and presentations and team meetings and pitches, even memos, little stories in memos. I want to um, finish uh, and uh, with a quick thing, a quick little story, um, and, and almost a, a plea, if you will. Um, the first thing is, um, I, well, I used to be, uh, I still run, but I used to do distance running and I, I used to run marathons and I had the pleasure of running four. My son, who's uh, annoyingly uh, funny, said, you know, you can't finish on four. Five's a better number. And I was like, okay, whatever. So, but I was running one time with my friends uh, in the valley here in Toronto and my, my leg hurt. It really hurt. And so I was kind of grumpy and I was complaining. And I turned to my, um, my friend, uh, Mary, who I was running with, and I said, my leg hurts. And she said, today's a gift. But I was grumpy. So instead of saying, oh, I like that, which I did, I said, oh, yeah, who said that? And she said, without skipping a beat, Master Sifu from Kung Fu Panda. And, and uh, I, I do love the phrase, uh, but I found out it's not Master Sifu. It was Eleanor Roosevelt. And she said, um, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift. That is why we call it the present. And I love that phrase, but I've also borrowed it, and I like to adjust it slightly and say that communication is a gift. And, and you'll see that everything I've talked about today is about embracing communication. Um, the reality is when we, when we think about communication as a skill, it often leaves our brain. Let me explain. We think about skiing, we think about tennis, we think about um, knitting, we think about all of these things as skills that we can develop. But we rarely think about communication as a skill to develop. So let me let me explain one quick thing and before we I wrap up, which is, uh, sorry, I wanna jump to this, which is when we talk about competency of something, whether it's skiing or tennis or learning how to bake sourdough, which everyone took up during COVID, we are what we call unconsciously incompetent when we start, right? We're like, I'm gonna do this, aha, this is gonna be great. And then we do it and we fall or it tastes bad or we suck at it, right? And we become un we become consciously incompetent. And then we get better at it, right? We become consciously competent. I got this, I can do this. And we keep going and we practice and we practice and we practice and we get so good that we go down that triple black diamond, we make that complex, beautifully textured sourdough, whatever it is, and we become unconsciously competent. And somebody says, how did you do that? You know, you have from I've got this to, I don't know, I've got what, I just do it. And the reality is communications like this too, but it never ends, right? We never end this ability to get better and better and better and better. And when we're challenged, we're just learning. When we fail, we're just learning. So, I would encourage you to think of communication as a gift and one that we do take for granted. But if, if, if you simplify, transform and perform, you wrap up that, that, that uh, communication, that carefully crafted communication with a story and you perform it and deliver it to others, What's going to happen is remarkable. They're going to actually receive it gladly. This is the magic. They're going to take it and they're going to give it to others. That's the greatest gift of communication. People sharing your communication with others. So I'm going to pause there. I do have um, a couple of things to share with all of you as a freebie before we wrap it up. But do, are there any questions, any comments? I'd like to give you like a round of applause, Nick. That was amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Appreciate it. Every I'm time just... I hear you speak, I'm like 
frantically taking notes, trying to think of all the places in my world that I can apply everything you've taught to. And then, <laughs> good job, Barbara. She gave you a round of applause too. <laughs> Thanks, and then Barbara. I'm like, there's not enough hours in the day for all the all the places in my life that this will make better. All the the scenarios. Like I just did a presentation on on Friday night, and as you're talking, I'm like, oh, I could have done this. I could have done this. I could have done this. Like. It's amazing how how applicable the information is that you've shared with us. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate all the comments uh, from, from the audience and from everyone out there. Uh, what I'm going to offer is a couple of things, if that's all right, is number one, if you'd like some of the, the tools, any, I'm sorry for those who won the book, but I'm going to give you a virtual version, a way to download it uh, as well if you use this QR code. Um, you can uh, get some of the tools as well as a, a PDF copy of the book. If you want a hard copy, it is available on Amazon, on all kinds of um, uh, 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 different sources, but you can get it there. Um, if you like the book, if you like the book, and if you like my presentation, if you find it valuable, um, there's two things I'd love you to do. Uh, I'd love you to go to Amazon, if you once you look at the book and you like it, and just write a review. Let me know if you liked it, or let the audience know, the world know if you liked it. That's the first thing. The second thing is if you are looking for help, if you're looking for some extra guidance in your business as um, as a communi in communications particular, as uh, uh, to be more effective as a leader in your communications, um, you can book a, a complimentary strategy session. Uh, here, and you can book it using this QR code. So I'm going to leave that up for a moment too, and then I will pass it, and I'm going to pass it back to you, Elizabeth, and I'll say thank you very much for having me. Oh, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you. And for those of you, Nick is the real deal. Nick and I have worked together quite a bit over the last year, and Nick has absolutely been essential for me in terms of developing not just clarity in terms of who I am, my business, what I communicate, but the most effective way to communicate it. So, um, so grateful. I know, Nick, you you have a birthday party that you're supposed to be at this evening, and instead you're you're spending your evening with us. So we're so grateful for the information information you shared and the knowledge. And uh, if you guys are struggling at all, if you're trying to figure things out, Nick is fantastic. And I know, Nick, you have workshops and there's all kinds of different ways that we can engage with you and, and get support from you on an ongoing basis too. Yeah, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. You can book that complimentary session and you can also join us at our webinar. We have a, a webinar happening in about a week and a half. Um, I wish I had my webinar register, but if you go onto LinkedIn and look at Kindler and Company, uh, you'll find the uh, webinar uh, uh, link on there as well. Awesome. So someone was saying the link didn't work for them. So perhaps they can just send you an email. I'm going to share your contact info in just a second here. Sure. Um, Absolutely. Kristen says, yet another outside the usual presentation. <laughs> 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 yeah, I like to try and keep things interesting. I, I want people to not view real estate just as a buying a property, but this is a business. So what do we need to do to run an effective business? I'm so glad you're able to join, guys. Let me just quickly wrap up here. Thank you again, Nick, for joining us. You are amazing as always. Okay. So at the end of every webinar, um, I always do a giveaway of a real estate related book. So last week I recorded a podcast with Ryan Carr. For those of you who don't knew, know him, he has a podcast called Highest and Best Use. So in our in our ongoing quest to give uh, people who are dedicated students an unfair advantage, we have an autographed copy of the Highest and Best Use playbook. Nick, can you pick someone between, pick a number between one and 40 and that attendee number will be contacted by Mary Beth and we'll be shipping you the free autograph copy of Highest and Best Use Playbook. Um, sure, 27. 27, love it, thank you. For those of you who are looking to connect with Nick or myself, uh, here is a, where you can find both of us. Uh, Nick has kindly shared his Facebook and his Instagram and Kindler and Company, his website. And if you're if the, the uh, QR code didn't work for you, then by all means, just send an email, reach out. Nick's team, super responsive, absolutely fantastic at communication. 
I wouldn't expect anything less from uh, mm-hmm. from Nick and his team, in all honesty. If you are new to my real estate community, please check out my YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe. And you will see many more webinars from the last three years, actually. Uh, Amazing people like Nick who have come on and very kindly shared their knowledge and their information to help us level up as real estate investors. I did have a question at the beginning of the webinar, which is what topics would you like to see covered in future webinars? If you have an idea or there's a topic that you'd like covered or somebody other than Tony Robbins you'd like me to have on, and then Nick, I will reach out to Simon Sinek and see if he's free next week for us. (laughs) (laughs) Then please, by all means, reach out to me by email or on one of the social medias. And uh, I'm always... I'm always open. I am always love to, to chat and to learn where people are struggling. My goal is to help make things easier for you and to enable you to succeed. My next webinar is Monday, July the 10th, and I'm going to have the two guys, Andrew and Ping from Property Hustlers. We are going to be talking about renovation hacks from Property Hustlers. Laura Bensi asked for this webinar a little while ago. She's really struggling with some contractors. So Laura, here it is. This is the webinar you really wanted. We're going to talk about things like how do you, you know, come up with ballpark quotes for renovations? How do you hire amazing contractors who are actually going to fulfill their obligations and not just run away with your money and all the other challenges and uh, tribulations that we have when we are dealing with contractors? I'd like to thank each and every one of you. Oh, (laughs) Barb wants Lee more. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to thank each and every one of you so much for joining us this evening. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of June, and I will look forward to seeing you all in July. Thanks again, Nick. Always a pleasure to connect with you and really appreciate all the information and insights you shared with us this evening. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye, everybody. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. Take care, guys. All the best. Have a fantastic uh, couple of weeks, and we'll see you again in July. By then, everybody will be on summer break. Woohoo! See you soon. (laughs) 